Hello and welcome to part one of Refactoring to a Solid Foundation, a series of screencasts in which we will explore the tenets of the solid object-oriented design principles by applying them to a refactoring series of exercises on an existing piece of software in order to understand how their application can improve the quality of our design as part of their implementation. To get started here briefly, let's examine the SOLID acronym in general. SOLID itself is actually an acronym of acronyms. The S is for the SRP, the O is for OCP, the L is for LSP, the I for ISP, and the D for DIP. Each one of these in turn is an acronym for an object-oriented design principle to which we're going to examine in this series of screencasts. The SRP actually stands for Single Responsibility Principle. OCP stands for the Open Close Principle. LSP stands for the Liskov Substitution Principle. ISP stands for the Interface Segregation Principle. And lastly, DIP stands for the Dependency Inversion Principle. One by one in this series of screencasts, we will examine each one of these principles and apply them to our software in order to better understand their value in our process. Let's get started with the Single Responsibility Principle. Put simply, the single responsibility says this. There should never be more than one reason for a class to change. A very simple sentence, or at least simple in its concept, it can be somewhat complicated to apply. However, we're going to examine this as we apply it to our software in this screencast. Um, the notion here is that if a class only has one reason to change, then it can only be doing one thing in your software. So each class should have a single responsibility in the overall system. That should be the one thing that class does. It should do it the best possible way that you can write it. Uh, but that class should have only one responsibility within the overall system. This is the notion of class cohesion, uh, which allows each class to do one thing and do it best. So now let's examine how we're going to apply this to our existing software. All right, we're here in Visual Studio 2008. We're going to take a look at our existing application quickly in order to understand what it does. The application itself is extraordinarily simple. It's a console application that basically does one thing. It prints reports. Right now, the way it works is when we new, when we, uh, in our main application, what we do is we new up an instance of our existing report class. We call print on it, uh, and then we just simply have a quick little read line here uh, in order to pause the application. So let's run it in order to see what's actually going on. We'll hit F5, and here we go. So this text output tells us what the application is doing in the order it's doing it. So first it gets data, then it formats the report, and then it prints the report. And then, of course, finally we have program and hit any key. So let's do that and close that out. If we take a look at how this actually works inside the existing report class, let's bounce over to its design so that we can see what's happening. The report class presently has three members. One of them is the public method print, which we're calling from our main. Um, the other two are private methods, format report and get data. And what we can imagine is that right now this report class has an awful lot of responsibility. And we can see that right now if we go on ahead and pop open our existing class diagram in order to inspect the existing report class. It's got three methods, as we mentioned, format report, get data, and print. So right now, our report class actually has at least three different responsibilities in our system. It's responsible for getting the data out of the database or whatever the data source is. It's responsible for formatting the report. And eventually, it's responsible for actually printing the report. So this clearly violates a single responsibility principle and what we're going to do now is refactor the existing report class in order to correct for that by applying the single responsibility principle to our existing software. So to get started we're going to take the report class and refactor its individual responsibilities into individual classes. The first responsibility we want to deal with is this responsibility right here. The fact that the report class is responsible for getting its own data. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and introduce a new class. We're going to call it data access and we're going to get rid of the empty constructor because we don't need it. We're going to take the entire body of the method get data from the report class and move it, whoops, move it right up here to the data access method or the data access class. We're going to need to make this method public in order for other things to get at it, um, but that takes care of data access. The next responsibility we have to worry about is the report is responsible for its own formatting. So just like we did a moment ago, let's introduce a brand new class we're going to call this class report formatter. We're going to get rid of the empty constructor because we don't need it. And we're going to take the body of the format report method and get it out of here and into report formatter. At which point we also need to make it public. 
So at this point, we've introduced two new classes, Data Access to handle our data access responsibility, Report Formatter to handle formatting the report responsibility. Um, and now what we need to do is we need to take a look at this print method in our report class. So one of the things we realize is that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a report to actually be responsible for its own printing. It probably makes more sense for there to be a report printer. So let's introduce that class as well. And we'll call it Report Printer. Notice the pattern, right? So let's get rid of the empty constructor because we don't need it. And let's take the guts of the print method and get it out of report printer and up into, I'm sorry, out of report and into report printer. So the first thing we need is we need to introduce a print method. Oops. We need to introduce a print method into our report printer. Um, this method, of course, also needs to be public, um, but that's going to hold the contents of the print method that used to be in the report class. So let's take that and move that right up there. So of course, as soon as we do that, what we notice is a couple of things. We first notice that the report class itself is really, really bare. It's just got its print method. In fact, right now its print method is empty. The way we're going to solve that is the print method for report is going to new up a report printer instance and simply call its print method. So it's delegating the responsibility for printing to the report printer class. So let's do that. Let's do new report printer. We'll put a variable in there, and then we'll simply say report printer dot print, and that should take care of the print method for the report class. In the report printer, however, class, we have a problem, which is that there are these two methods here, get data and format report, that obviously aren't part of the report printer class. Instead, format report is part of the report formatter class, and get data is part of the data access class. So what we need to do is we need to come in here and set up the print method for the report printer class so that it can actually use report formatter and data access in order to get its work done. So let's do that. So we need a new instance of our data access class. Let's do that. And we need a new, a new instance of our report formatter class. Let's get ourselves one of those. And then what we can do is we're going to call data access dot get data and we're going to call report formatter dot format report. And that's going to take care of that. So now what we see is that we've got a chain of responsibility going on here where the report class has a print method. It in turn news up an instance of the report printer and calls the print method on report printer. Inside the report printer class we have our print method and in order to get its work done it needs an instance of our data access class, it needs an instance of our report formatter class, and then it calls get data and format report and then finally does the print. Um, and so now everything in our system has exactly one responsibility. We should be able to run the application and since our refactoring has not changed any of the actual behavior, we should be able to see the exact same output on the console as we saw a moment ago. So let's hit F5 and take a look. And in fact we do. It still says getting data, it still says formatting report, and then it still says printing report. So the behavior of our application has not changed despite this refactoring. If we take a look at our class diagram, what we can do is, actually before we do that, let's come back to report and let's quickly get each one of these guys into a file by itself. So we'll take the data access class and move it to a file. We'll take the report printer class, move that to a file. Um, and we will lastly uh, take the report formatter class and move that to a file as well. And so that takes care of cleaning up our software a little bit in terms of how we organize things. And the reason we wanted to do that is because what we wanted to do is be able to take the report formatter and the report printer and the data access classes and add them to our class diagram so that we can see the relationships between them. And so as we expand this a little bit and so that we can understand what's actually going on is we've got, and let's just put program over there. So program calls report, report in turn, let's just move this over here, report in turn talks to report printer, and report printer relies on data access and report formatter in order to get its job done. And so what we've managed to do here is we have each class in our system responsible for exactly one thing. The main program, as far as it's concerned, just asks the report to print. However, when report needs to print, it goes to report printer, and report printer knows that it needs to first call formatter to format the, or first call data access to get the data, and then call report formatter in order to actually format the report and finally print. So each class in our system has exactly one responsibility, one reason to change. 
So if our data access method changes, the only place we need to go to change that is right here in our data access class. If we stop storing data in a database and start storing it in an XML file, we need to change just our data access class. If we change the way we format reports, now we want them to be 11 by 17 instead of 8.5 by 11, we can do that right here in our report formatter class. And so each class has one responsibility in the system. The other advantage to this is that you can begin to see that in terms of learning the software application, it becomes much easier for a new developer on the project to approach this and answer the question, gee, I wonder where the report formatting is controlled. Well, it's controlled right here in a class called report formatter. It's not buried in a method hidden somewhere in the report class, but it's actually in a class called report formatter that actually nicely encapsulates all of the formatting responsibilities that our application has. And so what we've managed to do is refactor our application so that the single responsibility principle has been applied to our class design. In subsequent screencasts, we'll take a look at applying the other solid principles in order to further improve the design. But this takes us to the end of our SRP demonstration for this screencast. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.